Why do Mary and Jesus appear on these coins? Let's find out. Money. I'm Dr. Brad Hafford, archaeologist and economic anthropologist. Welcome to Coin Corner, where I take a look at two coins from the past to see what they can tell me about the authority that issued them and the people who used them. My examples aren't always in the best condition, but even their wear patterns can tell us something. I've chosen examples that are connected in some way so that we can learn something in the comparison. In this case, I'm looking at dinar coins issued in Hungary in the 16th century. We'll begin by looking at the obverse of the first coin. It bears the clearest symbol of the issuing authority, which in this case is a coat of arms. On such a small coin, it's important to pack a lot of symbolism into a small space, and that's exactly what a coat of arms does. It's in the form of a shield divided into four quarters and with a smaller shield in the center. In the upper left, we see a set of horizontal stripes. These are associated with the founding dynasty of Hungary, the House of Arpad. The stripes have been omnipresent in Hungarian heraldry from the 13th century. In the upper right is the double-barred cross. Appearing in Hungarian heraldry from the 12th century, the symbol made its way into Western Europe through the House of Anjou, and there it came to be known as the Croix de Laurent. In the lower left are two Dalmatian leopard heads. These were associated with the Kingdom of Croatia and Dalmatia, which are modern Croatia and Bosnia-Herzegovina, south of what is today Hungary. As we shall see, the area known as Hungary has often changed borders. In the lower right is a Bohemian lion. This symbol was associated with the Kingdom of Bohemia, modern Czech Republic. Combined, the different symbols show just how interconnected the region around modern Hungary was at the time of this coin. Further complicating the coat of arms is the central shield of Austrian bonds. After the Battle of Mohawks in 1526, Hungary was split with the west under the control of Archduke Ferdinand of Austria, the east under John I of Transylvania, and the south under the Ottoman Emperor Suleiman the Magnificent. Surrounding the coat of arms is a beaded border, and outside this is a largely abbreviated legend. At the top is the date the coin was struck, 1542. After that is the name of the ruler, Ferdinand. He was part of the Habsburg dynasty and younger brother of the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. The western portion of Hungary that he controlled became known as Royal Hungary and would remain a kind of buffer state against the Ottomans for some time to come. Ferdinand's Latin title is abbreviated after the date. It stands for Dei Gratia Rex Ungariae, or, by the grace of God, King of Hungary. Ferdinand was not yet Holy Roman Emperor, he took that title when his brother abdicated in 1556. Flipping the coin over a rather skewed axis, we see that it is small, thin, and not perfectly round. These imperfections are due to the difficulties of striking coins nearly 500 years ago. Made of only 50% silver, it measures just over 15 millimeters and weighs around half a gram. The coin today is known as a Madonna and Child coin because of the principal image on the reverse, particularly as a buffer state between the Christian Holy Roman Empire and the Muslim Ottoman Empire, Hungary held strongly to its Christian imagery. Thus, Mary holding the baby Jesus was displayed prominently on these coins. Mary's crowned head breaks the central beaded circle to become part of the surrounding legend. Her flowing hair runs down her shoulders and she holds her baby near the top of the inner circle. Her robed form is flanked by two letters, K and B. This is the mint mark of Kremnitz, reading in Hungarian as Kremuch Banya, or in German as Kremnitz Bergstadt. Founded in 1328, it is the oldest mint still functioning today. The legend on the reverse carries only two words, and neither is abbreviated, Patrona Ungariae and it translates as patroness of Hungary because Mary was seen as the protector of royal Hungary. It was common on early coins to have one side political and the other religious. These were the two things seen to unite any region, 
its rule of law, and its rule of faith. Neither of these was able to end monetary crime, however. Counterfeits were very common. Criminal elements sought to make a profit by striking their own examples of these coins in copper and coating them with a thin silver wash. Silver content was already relatively low at 50%, but copper was much cheaper, and if silver content could be effectively brought down under 5%, the savings would be high. Here's an example of a contemporary counterfeit of the Madonna and Child coin. It retains a small portion of silver coating, but the majority is copper. It's a good copy, with most of the details and the correct legend. Even the KB mint mark is present. The obverse 2 is accurate and carries a date of 1538. Coins like this are typically called non-regal strikes because they were not authorized by the king. The early non-regal Madonna and child coins like this one are typically well made though, which has led to a theory that they were secretly issued by the state to help maintain the Habsburg coffers. Official reduction of the precious metal content in coins, known as debasement, was a common government tactic. The low percentage of silver in the official Hungarian dinar was already state-sanctioned, though. In such cases of official debasement, all examples of coins shift over to the debased state. But in this case, 50% silver coins and silver-plated coins are found together, so the more likely scenario is that they were struck by an organized group of savvy counterfeiters or corrupt local officials. Let's now compare this Madonna and Child dinar with a later version of the same coin. This one is much darker due to the tarnish of age. We can still see, though, that it bears the same imagery as the first coin. Here on the reverse, we have the crowned Madonna with her child, and just visible at her sides are the letters K and B. Mary and Jesus are both a bit more abstract in this version, lacking some of the detail of the earlier strikes. The legend is also different here. The words are the same but abbreviated. Though it would not be necessary in Latin, the H of Hungary is now in use. The abbreviation has also left room for the date on this side rather than on the obverse, and at the bottom we can see that this coin was struck in 1590. Flipping the coin over, we see that it's small and imperfect in shape. It is slightly larger than the earlier coin, but weighs the same at around half a gram. It, too, is made of only 50% silver. The obverse bears the same central image as the 1542 coin, the shield-shaped coat of arms with all of the same emblems. Like the Madonna image, the coat of arms is somewhat lower in relief, though, and this coin bears a different legend because it was issued by a different ruler. The text here is heavily abbreviated, and even the abbreviations are hard to make out. I'll try to clarify it here. It stands for Rudolphus II, Romanorum Imperator Semper Augustus Germaniae Hungariae Bohemiae Rex. It's a Latin mouthful, revealing more titles than Ferdinand. Hungary was more firmly in the hands of the Habsburgs now, and Rudolf claimed first and foremost his title as Holy Roman Emperor, then King of Germany, King of Hungary, and King of Bohemia. The Habsburgs were proud of their claim to continuing a Roman Empire, and the use of Latin on the coins is another indication of that. Even the currency unit, dinar, ultimately derives from the Roman denarius. Interestingly, Rudolf the I, II, and V are the same person in different areas. He became king of Hungary in 1572 as Rudolf the I, of Bohemia in 1575 as Rudolf the II, Archduke of Austria in 1576 as Rudolf V, and Holy Roman Emperor also in 1576 and again as Rudolf II. What more can we learn about Hungary in the 16th century from these coins? The area known as Hungary is quite different today from its territory 500 years ago. It had often been affected by Ottoman incursions, and the Ottomans officially took large portions of Hungary in 1526. Even the eastern portion ruled by John I of Transylvania essentially became a vassal state of the Ottomans. The Treaty of Nagivarad in 1538 settled territorial boundaries limiting the Habsburgs to the northern and western portions of the area. This area did not include Budapest, 
and the capital was at Pressburg, which is now Bratislava in modern Slovakia. The narrow stretch of Royal Hungary ran much farther south than modern Hungary, encompassing parts of Croatia down to the Adriatic coast. This explains many of the emblems on the coat of arms shown on the coins that are not on the current coat of arms of Hungary. The debate over the territorial boundaries of Royal Hungary in the west versus that of the Principality of Transylvania in the east continued until 1570. At that point, John II gave his claim as King of Hungary over to Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian II. But the Ottomans continued to control southern and central Hungary, and Rudolf's campaign against them eventually ruined him. He was determined to unify Christendom with a new crusade, and began what was called the Long War with the Turks in 1593. It lasted until 1606, at which time Hungarian subjects revolted and forced Rudolf to cede rule to his brother Matthias, who forged a difficult peace. Madonna and child coins continued under Matthias, typically poorly struck and with increasing numbers of counterfeits in a region that had been ravaged by the Long War and would soon be consumed by another, the Thirty Years' War. I hope you enjoyed looking at these coins with me. I'm Dr. Brad Hafford. Join me again next time on Coin Corner, part of my series, Money Talks.